Hi everyone, I'm Kira Dewey, a freshman biology major at St. Bonaventure University. And we're related. As much as I hope that my mom watches this video, I'm not really talking to her. Anyone that watches this video, if you're a biologist, a curious elementary school student, or someone who really doesn't care that much about science or education, we're still related to one another. In fact, you're related to everyone and everything else on the entire planet. Let me show you what I mean. There is more connecting us to each other than we're often aware of. To help us walk through our family history together, I've brought our family photo album, or at least a drawing that I made of one. I say it's ours because we are the result of the first ever cellular life on the planet, which we call the protocell. Let's open up to the first page. On the left is a picture of our great grand cell. There are really a lot more greats in that title, but for the sake of time, I won't say all of them. This is the first cell to ever appear on the planet around 4 billion years ago. On the right is one of her many generations of grandchildren who I've named Eukaryon John. This is a modern mammalian cell. Although a lot of time passed between the existence of our great grand cell and Eukaryon John, there are only a few differences between them. Just like you see a similarity between the faces of your family members in photo albums at home, the pictures on the first page of our family photo album share lots of similarities. For example, both our great grand cell and Eukaryon John have a lipid or fat based outer layer of protection called a membrane. They also both use RNA, or ribonucleic acid, that has the bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Both of these types of cells also use a proton gradient as a source of energy. I said before that both our great grand cell and cells like eukaryon John have a lipid membrane. This is actually true of all living organisms. The lipid membrane that protects and compartmentalizes cellular life everywhere is made out of amphiphilic lipids, or a type of fat molecule that have both a water-loving and water-hating section. The difference in affinity for water within these amphiphilic lipids is what allows them to spontaneously form a spherical bilayer or double layer in an aqueous or water-based solution. This is likely how and why the first membranes came to be and where the cellular plan began. This is what the next page of our family photo album looks like. On the left is the RNA that was present in our great grand cell, and on the right is the RNA that's present in Eukaryon John, who is representative of humankind. Notice that RNA looks the same now as it did then, or almost. This is a really important piece of evidence of our history together. You, me, the person sitting next to you, every pet you've ever had, every plant in your garden, and anything living in the entire world uses RNA as a genetic code. It is believed that in hydrothermal vents deep in the early ocean, the contested origin of life, that a proton gradient existed between these vents and the ocean water. It's further hypothesized that this gradient was utilized by early cells, such as our great grand cell, to support life processes, such as the synthesis of organic molecules. In cells today, like eukaryon John, we can see examples of a proton gradient being used. For example, the mitochondria in our cells right now are using a proton gradient to provide us with energy in the form of ATP. You may be wondering why this basic cellular plan repeats for all living organisms. To help us walk through this concept, even though it might sound strange, I'll show you a video of my brother and I making a bracelet. But first, let's get familiar with the components of the video. Scientists aren't sure what form the RNA existed in within our protocells. For the sake of this video, we will imagine that RNA existed then, like DNA does today, in a double helix. My brother Bryn will represent a template strand of RNA. RNA was likely self-replicating in early cells, such as our great-grand cell. I will be playing the role of the replicator, not my brother Bryn, to demonstrate this better visually, and to call attention to the fact that while the carrier and replicator were both RNA, they were not one unit. They were related though, sort of like how Bryn and I are siblings. The string that we use to make the bracelet represents the sugar phosphate backbone of these contested RNA double helices. The different colored beads will represent the four RNA nitrogenous bases, A, U, G, and C. The proximity between my brother and myself and the container for the beads represent the benefits of organization within a cell, which allow for more efficient processing and exchange of resources. 
much like Bryn and I did in the video that I just showed you. The self-replicating RNA that was present on early Earth benefited from a lipid membrane keeping all of its resources within one area. Since these membranes were first acquired by early life, any subsequent changes, like those seen in our comparatively more complex cells today, allowed for cellular life to become more efficient at replicating genetic material, utilizing energy sources, and exchanging resources within its environment. By extension of this logic, the only thing that separates us as species is what was more beneficial during a certain time and place. And what separates us as individuals within the same species becomes even smaller by comparison. So even though you're probably not my mom, and I might not have known you before this video started, I hope that I've convinced you we're related. This isn't to say that our diversity as a race should be ignored. It is a source of beauty and should be celebrated. However, during times that challenge our ability to remember our unity and treat one another with love and respect, we might benefit from thinking about the billions of years of history that we share together and exploring the evidence of this that exists on a cellular level. Thank you for watching and welcome to the family.